So all it will do is uh, permit the legislature or give the legislature the authority to pass a local option, and let me emphasize that local option, liquor by the drink bill, and that's it. Senator, why has your organization and you personally fought so hard to get this sort of legislation in Texas? Well, there, there are a number of reasons, but I think uh, basically I, I know that I feel that what we presently have is, is a dishonest and hypocritical system, and uh, I'm convinced that it does more to, to foster the disrespect not only for the liquor laws in Texas, but for all the laws in Texas, and uh, I am, uh, I'm determined to change this unhealthy uh, situation that presently exists. Next year, we're told that we're going to be faced with another tremendous tax problem. And will this alleviate that situation in the event that it passes? Well, it'll be a major step toward alleviating it, and it could very easily mean the difference between a uh, either a corporate uh, or a personal income tax or, or, or not if it passes and the revenue comes in as we predict it will. Well, at this point, our investigation is not complete, and I, I'm not in a position to make that statement. The only statement I can make is that he had every reason to believe that a felony had been committed. He was perfectly within his rights to make the arrest. The question here is whether or not he had the authority to use as much force as he did in making the arrest. So this is a question that we have to resolve, and I can't make a comment on that part of it until the investigation is complete. I uh, don't think we should ever announce what we were going to do. Uh, I don't think we should announce we're not going in by 21 miles. It seems to me all you're doing is helping the enemy when you make that kind of announcement. I would think from the way things are developing that probably the South Vietnamese may go back in there, but I would doubt very much that we do. This Oak Cliff Neighborhood Center will be one of 34 polling places used tomorrow in the War on Poverty target area board member elections. There are a total of 35 candidates running for the 11 positions to be open, with at least two candidates in each position. War on Poverty Deputy Director Albert Orozco is in charge of the election, and he's enthusiastic about it, but he says his greatest problem has been running a properly conducted election on such short notice. The election is supposed to be run in principle, according to the principles of the Texas Election Code. Curiously enough, Orozco says he hasn't gotten all the support he would like from the current community and governmental board members. Only half of those have said that they can take part in poll watching tomorrow. Of the current target area board members, all but two will be helping in tomorrow's election. Anyone over 21 who lives in one of the 11 target areas can vote tomorrow. All he has to do is show up at his polling place and give his name and address. This kind of election is something of a first for the war on poverty, and because of that, neither Acting Director Bennett Miller nor Deputy Director Albert Orozco say they have any idea of just how many people will show up to vote. This is Teal Salon reporting. As you know, of course, there's much debate going on in the Senate right now. And the last few days I've been over in the Senate uh, quite a bit on a conference on our space authorization bill with the senators, and the ones I talked to seem to think that they have the votes to take some action, either on uh, limitation of money or, uh, or a resolution saying the president uh, did something he shouldn't have. As far as the House is concerned, I don't think there'll be anything done. If, uh, if something comes over from the Senate uh, limiting money on the Campbell election, I don't believe the House would ever agree to it. You don't think then that the president will have the funds limited? You don't think I the don't fund think limitation the president will have the funds limited. Uh, certainly Cambodia is a, a can of worms and uh, uh, it's a most difficult situation where over there we're fighting an enemy who don't consider any boundaries, be it Laos, be it Cambodia or any place, and yet uh, we try to abide by certain rules while they sit just across the river in Cambodia with all their supplies and, and, uh, and guns and uh, 
kill our people. And uh, I for sure don't uh, condemn the president. Uh, I think we should have done this five years ago. What do you mean by one-man rule and polarization of the community? Well, just like I said, it's uh, any person that has a, the power that he can call the governor and cut off funds or do anything that the four commissioners of Dallas County can do, and we were the elected officials, elected body of this county. I say it's one-man rule, and I say it's a sad day for this community when he can go all over this county and make speeches against the commissioners and against the particular fa uh, uh, group of people in this community. It's bad. And I think this will affect the business community, and I think it will affect the people that's come, that want to come in this community. They'll be run off by such people and statements as Judge Starrett has been making for the last six months. I don't think it's good for this community when one person can polarize it and make hate speeches and speak out against the poor people of this community and expect this community to stay together. I can remember back in 1958 when we had about the same situation here, and I hope that we don't get back at, uh, in, the, in the 1950s again. At the time of this shooting, Officer Newsom had reason to believe that a crime had been committed. There were two persons behind a building, a service station, and one was carrying a box. When the officers approached the two people, they ran in separate directions, and one of the persons being chased by Officer Newsom refused to halt upon his command to halt. As a result, Officer Newsom uh, fired one time, but it struck the youth. Now, circumstances can be deceiving in a case like this, and you must understand that this officer at the time of this incident had every reason to believe that a felony had been committed, and he was acting at that time to the best of his judgment. He had every reason to make an arrest under these circumstances. This incident is very regrettable. And this matter will be referred to the Dallas County Grand Jury for a determination and this procedure will be the policy of this department in the future as well. We want someone with a legal authority to look at this case in an objective way so that we can make the proper determination of whether or not this officer was within his authority to make this uh, action. some in-service training regarding the use of firearms and as you know our policy now is one of following the state statute in this respect and we will, we will begin to re-emphasize the policy that the officer must use as his guidance in this respect and in addition to that we will begin to uh, emphasize the moral obligations of a police officer in a situation like this. This is one of the things that we need to really bear down on and one which we have not uh, given as much emphasis in the past as we should have. In my opinion, our veteran hospitals are in the worst shape they've been in my 20 some odd years in Congress. We have just completed a complete survey of the whole 165 hospitals. And since that time, uh, we have persuaded the uh, White House to ask for an additional 50 million. And in the appropriation bill last week, we put in an additional 25 million. So we put in about 75 million additional dollars this year. Now, Phil, uh, uh, I think a a telling point on our veteran hospitals is that veteran hospitals have a, a an employee patient ratio of about 1.5 employees per patient. In all your other hospitals, they run up to three employees per patient. In your the three is your teaching hospitals. Most of the others are are 2.7 or something like that. So that one fact alone 
uh, proves a lot of things. Now, we've had complaints from doctors working in hospitals from all over the United States, from Miami, Florida, from Boston, Massachusetts, from Los Angeles, California, and uh, our hospitals here in Texas are not as bad as some of the others, but our hospitals here in Texas are short of personnel, and they're short of money to operate their hospitals. Where will the money go? Will that go toward more personnel, or will it go toward operating expenses? Still, it'll go to both. We have bought uh, medicines changing, so uh, your intensive care wards, kidney machines, and, and a lot of equipment like that that we have bought and don't have the personnel to run them. Part of the money will go there. Uh, part of it will go just for additional personnel. So the students feel as if the courses in general ought to be related in some way to their occupational needs. Many of them think that they feel like the courses really don't have that much to offer them for their future life or what they're going into as an occupation. They also feel like there should be more time for individual study on the teacher's part, that they can't get enough actually with a big class and they need uh, this individual instruction to really you know, learn the subject well. We're in the process right now of developing program recommendations for next year. These suggestions of students will be built in, so far as is possible, to our program improvements for next year. What makes you think these students uh, know what they should really have? Well, I think that uh, if you really want to know what you ought to provide, you need to go to your client. And these students are our clients, and we think some of the best information we get about program improvements will come right from students happy that we got to recommend all these changes because some of them are really necessary. In the chemistry field, there are, there's not enough lab equipment. You can only teach what lab equipment you have available. This Oak Cliff Neighborhood Center is one of the 34 polling places that will be used in tomorrow's War on Poverty target area board member election. There are a total of 35 candidates running for the 11 positions, with at least two candidates vying for each position. War on Poverty Deputy Director Albert Orozco, who's conducting the election, says that he's enthusiastic about it, but that his greatest problem has been conducting a proper election on such short notice. Curiously enough, Orozco says he hasn't gotten all the support he would have liked to have had from the current board. The, of the governmental and community sector board members, only half will be able to take part in poll watching tomorrow. This type of election is something of a first for the war on poverty, and because of this, neither Acting Director Bennett Miller nor Deputy Director Orozco say they have any idea of just how many people will show up tomorrow to vote. This is Teal Salon reporting. These are outhouses in Dallas County. They are located in the Armstrong Stafford edition in the southeast part of the county. Some have called Armstrong Stafford a freak of progress. Although it wasn't named for them, it does bear the names of two of America's space heroes, and that's ironic. There is absolutely nothing here remindful of sp science or technology. Armstrong Stafford, you see, is a town of some 500 people who live without water sewer service. There's a privy behind almost every house. There are five wells in town, but they can't begin to supply the need. Hauling water is a daily chore here, like sweeping the floor in the morning or putting the cat out at night. Armstrong Stafford was never planned. It happened. It evolved out here on a hill over a period of some four decades. The people who live here are self-reliant, and they have a strange pride in their community. An example is the Community Action Committee Recreation Center here. It's the only one in all of Dallas County in the War on Poverty program owned by the community itself. The people here pitched in their money, bought the building, and fixed it up themselves. But no amount of local initiative or self-reliance is going to solve the Armstrong Stafford water problem. The people here have asked Seagerville, some two miles away, to annex them and run water lines to their community. However, Seagerville officials say they simply don't have the money, and the city already has bond obligations through 1990. Now Seagerville has agreed to annex the area if the federal government will provide a loan or grant to finance a water system for Armstrong Stafford.
Proposals and counter-proposals have been made. There have been studies, reports, maps drawn, brainstorm sessions, and the people of Armstrong Stafford have waited. Somehow, it seems a little ridiculous that in sophisticated modern 1970 Dallas County, virtually in the shadow of the skyscrapers which mark the so-called social hub of the Southwest, we should have an Armstrong Stafford. The people of Armstrong Stafford think so. Tommy Ayers reporting for Channel 8 News from Armstrong Stafford, May 22, 1970. Uh, we have, the neighbors in this community have complained to the man about either getting a fence or covering his bells on account that every month there's a fire and it is a fire hazard. We have called City Hall, the fire department, the marshal and anything else and they just don't refuse to do anything about it. Last night the whole neighborhood could have started in a fire if I would have been awake and called the fire department. Now, we're getting tired and we think we're going to go to the city council and ask for their help because we need something. They, they, they really don't care. If you take, take the pictures of the streets during the day, there's paper all over the neighborhood. There's a law against littering. They should be fined. Our officials estimate the damage at approximately $14,000 to the stored used paper stock. Art Sinclair, Channel 8 News, Fort Worth. Do you think that you might have a similar strike here in Texas? Uh, not, uh, we, won't, we won't have it if Congress acts. If Congress, if Congress does it. not act, if Congress does not act, it could very possibly happen. But because our people feel very strongly in this, this particular situation.
Fire department officials here in Fort Worth are investigating the possibility of arson in last night's three-alarm fire here at the American Paper Company. The fire broke out around 1.15 a.m. A witness who works nearby said that he had seen a group of children playing in the area. There had been some fires in recent months, and these same kiddos on bicycles had been there just moments before those fires broke out also. Today, we talk with fire investigator W.H. Gates. The first fireman on the scene found that there were several different fires scattered throughout the premises, one being segregated entirely away from the other fires. Out here on the lot where we're standing, there were four or five different bales of, pay, of uh, paper, compressed paper on fire, with no apparent communication between this paper and the metal warehouse building. It's not the first fire that has actually taken place out here, is it? No, we've had uh, numerous fires in the past two or three years. The first one was that they was able to sit down and negotiate a contract with the post office department, the first one that had ever been negotiated in history on wages. It was sent to the Congress by the, with the president's approval, and they received a 6% increase. And they were also working now on an 8% increase, which this wouldn't bring us up to comparable wages, but it's an improvement of what we had before. You want to call it sick in or whatever. There weren't uh,
kind of feedback do you get in terms of the Latin American people's reaction to things like our own uh, student unrest and student rebellion? They have been, for some time, had to cope with student problems. Yes, they have, and the fact that they have had to cope with student problems, perhaps traditionally, is uh, makes them intellectually perhaps more, able, more more aware of the student relationship in a politicized sense to to the population as a whole than we have been. But I've just come back from two weeks in South America, and I think it's fair to say that the members of government, their governments, to whom I talk are concerned about the picture that the United States of America projects, which is in what they know is what they read in the papers. Uh, they are concerned about the fine line in the United States of America or anywhere else between political action and, and anarchy, if you want to use a very strong word, or law and order, or order, or discipline, or national purpose. Well, I'm not sure that's true. I, uh, I don't believe that. We'll have to wait and see how the campaign develops uh, to uh, actually, uh, I think, distinguish between the two. But I'm sure there are a number of differences between them. Are there any that you could demarcate at this point? Any clear differences between the two? Oh, as individuals, uh, I, would, I wouldn't try to attempt at this particular point in time to try to say how one would act under a given set of circumstances and how another one would act. I think the principal difference is going to be that, that uh, George Bush is inevitably going to be tied to, uh, to the president's program and to the president himself. Uh, Lloyd Benson will not, uh, just to the contrary. Uh, uh, he would be more uh, prone to be critical of this administration and of its program. Uh, now, when you, when you get down to certain basic issues that are before, uh, before the people today, uh, I'm sure there's going to be many of them on which they will agree. There are many on which all of us will agree. I felt all along that uh, what happened uh, would happen. I, I really felt that. Governor, do you agree with uh, Senator Yarbrough that it was the Republicans crossing over that caused his defeat? And would you advocate, as he does, a changing in the primary system? Well, number one, I don't agree with him at all. I don't think that happened. I, I think if you look at the results, uh, the counties that Mr. Benson carried, and you take Jefferson County and Orange County and Angelina County and uh, Nacogdoches County and all of East Texas and uh, uh, over 200, I've gotten the precise number, uh, approximately 200 plus counties that he carried. I just don't believe uh, that statement is in accord with the facts. What do you think did cause this to be I'm of the opinion, or I think that uh, Yarbrough beat himself at the best to capitalize on things that Yarbrough does. Well, I think that's basically right. I, I, I think uh, you, you first take, oh, you can always reconstruct a campaign, and you can say if this had happened or that had happened, the results would have been different. Uh, I don't know what a, uh, a light vote did. Uh, I'm not sure a heavy vote would have changed the results. I personally don't think so. I think Senator Yarbrough made certain basic mistakes. I think he has been making them over a period of time. I think Senator that uh, uh, Lloyd Benson basically capitalized on those mistakes, and uh, that was the uh, that was the primary.